Hello, everybody. Today we're gonna visit the Reiner residence, better known for its nickname Silvertop. It's one of the largest, most expensive, and most complex designs by John Lautner. The house is full of groundbreaking innovations, being the first house in the world with an infinity pool, having an entire facade made of frameless glass, walls that can swing open with remote control, and with a driveway that floats in the air. The house was commissioned by Ken Reiner, who gave John Lautner complete creative freedom. John Lautner used this freedom for many experiments and the project went over budget many times. It took 16 years before the house was completed. The saddest part of the story is that Ken Reiner never lived in a house. He went bankrupt before the finalization and he had to sell his unfinished property in 1971. With the building process starting in 1957, it was the first house by John Lautner that was made entirely out of concrete. This would lead to his other famous later works that were all made out of concrete. The house is built on top of a hill overlooking the Silver Lake. The shape of the lake was the inspiration for the layout of the house. It's built of four oval shapes, the swimming pool, the living room, the sleeping area, and finally, the carport. Seen from the front, the curving lines of the house resemble the curving shapes of the hilltop. The house exists of two buildings, one main building, which is one story high, and a single story guest house, which is placed lower on the hill. From street level, it is impossible to catch a glimpse of the house. The entire building is placed high on the hilltop. When you drive through the entry gate, you go over a steep climbing driveway. A series of iron beams is placed over this driveway. Over the years, plants and ivy grew over these beams, creating an organic tunnel. The concealment of the driveway creates the illusion of an unbroken hillside, and it integrates the house more in the landscape. When you leave the tunnel, you see that the driveway curves like a snake around the circular guest house. This drawing shows how the house was placed on the hilltop. From every direction the ground level immediately descends at the edges of the house. This means that every single inch of the available building space is used creating a fairly large building on a limited piece of ground. The hilltop was even so small that it didn't have place for the curving driveway. Therefore the driveway was hung up at the walls of the guest house. The driveway comes completely free of the ground and was only 4 inches thick. But due to the use of forced concrete and iron supporting beams, the driveway can hold a lot of weight. It took many difficult calculations to construct the driveway and it took many testings to secure its reliability. The driveway is a brilliant piece of engineering and it's possibly the most daring part of the house. Directly after the driveway is a carport that can hold at least 5 cars. From here the driveway continues. It passes the front door and then the garden, where it goes downwards. It goes through another gate, where it finally ends in a street at the other side of the hill. Ok, let's now have a complete overview of the house. When we remove the roof, you can see that the large part belongs to the carport. We can also see that the oval shape returns in the layout of the rooms. Despite the enormous size of the house, it has a limited number of separated rooms, creating large open spaces. Let's now step through the front door. Next to the front door is an atrium, a garden with a tree in it and closed by glass walls and which is open to the air. The atrium brings extra sunlight in the house.
The rectangular kitchen is very large with its own cooking island and a dining table. At the other side of the atrium is a sleeping area. The corridor is sunlit by many skylights in the ceiling. The weight of the roof demands supporting walls, so you can't have large windows. Therefore, John Lawner decided to place the brick walls diagonal. By doing this, there are enough walls to support and there is place to have windows at the same time. The master bedroom has its own fireplace that is decorated with a rock stone that was found on the building spot and is installed in a chimney made of bricks and concrete. Large glass sliding windows give access to a private terrace that looks over a rock garden. The wooden walls of the bedroom can swing open with remote control. This transforms the intimate feeling of the bedroom into a spatial feeling in just a few seconds. With only a press of a button, the ceiling above the bed can slide open. So if you want, you can watch the sky while you are sleeping. Behind the large walk-in closet is the bathroom, which is sunlit by an atrium. Some of the walls and the ceiling of the bathroom are made of glass. While the ceiling can slide open, one wall sinks mechanically in the ground. So on hot days you can shower in the fresh air. Let's now take a look in a huge living room. The floor level and the ceiling are slightly curving because they are following the elevations of the hillside. The oval shape of the concrete fireplace echoes the shape of the house. The brick wall in the living room can mechanically lift up, creating a hatch between the kitchen on one side and a dining table on the other side. In the corner of the living room is a cactus garden that visually blends with the garden at the other side of the glass. This blurs the boundaries between inside and outside. Behind the living room is an office that looks over the swimming pool. The house looks over the Hollywood sign and the Griffith Observatory in the back and over the Silver Lake in the front. It would be a waste to spoil such a beautiful view. Therefore the house needed to have entire walls of glass. But how can you support a concrete roof with only walls of glass? The answer? A curving roof. When you have a flat roof, the weight is distributed over the entire surface, so you need a lot of pillars to support the roof. When you have a curving roof, the weight is transported towards the right and left side of the house. You only need four very strong pillars, two on both sides, to hold the roof in place. These concrete pillars are cemented with foundations in the ground. They are inside the house and visible in the kitchen and in the office. The roof itself was made of a very thin layer of casted and forced concrete. This construction was the first step in the building process. The rest of the house came later. John Lawner went so far in his desire to create an unbroken panorama that he didn't allow any window frames to break the view. Therefore, he made concrete frames at the floor and at the ceiling. Glass panels were simply slide in these frames, with only a little bit of glue in the splits between them. These glass sheets make the living room completely transparent. From a distance, 
you can see hardly any window at all. Let's now take a walk through the garden. From the garden you have an amazing view over downtown LA, which is on the west side of the Silver Lake area. This tree was already growing long before the house was built. John Lawner decided not to remove the tree and build the house around it. The trunk goes through an oval shaped hole in the roof. Left from the house, the ground level already descends. Therefore, the swimming pool had to be placed on the slope of the hillside. At the start of the pool, the water level is in line with the ground level. But at the rear, the ground is in line with the bottom. Because the swimming pool has no edge, the reflection in the water blends in with the water of the Silver Lake below. Creating the first infinity pool in the world, an invention that has been copied many times since then. The sliding door towards the terrace slides mechanically in the concrete window frame. The terrace has no balustrade, giving you the feeling that you're sitting on the edge of the landscape. In the background you can see the observation tower, which is next to the carport. The top of the tower is accessible by ladder. From here you have a 360 degree view over the landscape. Of course the platform is oval shaped. From the back door of the kitchen is a pathway that goes behind the carport. This pathway leads to a stair. From here you can enter the lower guest house. This house is used for business meetings and has a reception room with panoramic windows. The roof exists of a series of wooden beams that are attached to a half concrete circle which is connected to the floor of the carport above. Because the house is owned by a music producer, there is also a music studio with a recording booth. There is also a guest bedroom. In the guest bedroom you can see the rear end of the iron beams that support the driveway. Because the guest house supports both the carport and the driveway, the walls are very thick with small tiny windows. Through the windows you can see the cars driving up the driveway. Silvertop is a combination of many inventions that John Lawner had already done in previous works or would reuse in later homes. This makes the house somewhat of a summary of all his trademarks. A very complete illustration of his vision on architecture. This was your tour guidance. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.